All right, so today we're going to be using the Keras functional API to create an advanced model that predicts multiple outputs. So it makes multiple predictions. Now, the neat thing about this tutorial is we're going to be using this model to predict lane lines and the types of lanes using images from a car's camera. Coming up. All right, now if you're wondering where I got the data for this, um, I actually hooked up a camera uh, to my own vehicle and drove around my area, and then I uploaded the images to this site called Supervisely, and it allows you to annotate the images so you can basically draw on the images uh, using this visual interface here. Um, and then you can then download the, the images already annotated um, as, as your data set. So that's where I got my data set from for this tutorial. Now the site's pretty cool, and in case you're wondering, uh, when you download the data set from the site, from Supervisely, it gives you a couple different folders here. It gives you the original images, it gives you um, the machine images, right? This is for your training data, so if you open them up, it just looks black um, because, you know, the pixel values are only like one. Uh, they're very small numbers, so they, you, can't, you can't view them as a human. They're not human visible. But if you could view the labeled images, they would look something like this where you'd see mostly zeros, where, where there were not lanes, and then where there were lanes, you'd see pixel values of one, okay? Um, but it does give you human readable images, and it's pretty neat, so let's take a look at one of these. So it shows you the images side by side. It shows you the original image on the left, and then the annotated image on the right. So you can see the lanes here highlighted in blue. Um, so that's pretty neat. So it's, I, I like the site. It's a pretty handy tool. Now after I download the images, I then load them into a NumPy array. So I created a function here to do that, create NumPy lane data set, okay? And this just loops over all the images and throws them into NumPy, NumPy arrays, okay? Then I went ahead and created a CSV file, okay? And this will contain the labels for the lane type. All right, so the images uh, that data set will tell you where the lanes are and what the lanes are basically. And then I have this CSV file where I took each frame and I noted whether, whether the left lane was a double line, single line, solid line, broken line, whatever, right? So as, as that function creates the data set, it will then look up the file name of the image in this CSV file and that will grab the lane types from this file, okay? So that's how I created the data set. Okay, first off, most tutorials out there will cover the Keras sequential model. Okay, it's the most basic model. Uh, you can get a lot done with it, but it is limiting in certain ways. Okay, like for example, if you want to do what we're going to do today, which is handle multiple outputs, right? So we want to not only predict where the lanes are, we also want to predict this, the lane type, okay, with, from within the same model. All right. Now, you're probably already familiar with the sequential model, right? It goes something like this. You'll create model equals keras.sequential, and then you'll do model.add, and you'll add a dense layer, okay, maybe 64 neurons, right? And you'll have your activation equals ReLU, or whatever the case may be, and you just keep stacking the layers that way. Okay, but that's not what we're going to do today. Okay, we're going to use the fu Keras functional API, which is a more advanced, allows you to build more advanced models. Okay, so let's first review the code a little bit here. Okay, so first thing I do is in pretty much all my code, I set some parameters. Okay, so here we're just setting the path to our trading data. Okay, and our label data. Now notice we have two sets of labeled data. Okay, we have our labeled lane images, right? This is this is the where the lanes are, okay? And obviously we have our X or input data, right? That's our original image. Okay, but then we also have this auxiliary Y file or auxiliary label data, and that tells us the lane type. Remember, that's coming from our CSV file, okay? So we have essentially two outputs here, okay? One input, two outputs, all right? Next lines here, we're just loading our NumPy arrays, okay? We're loading all of our data, training data. That's it. We're getting the shape of our values, some print statements here. Okay, 
Now is where we start building our model. Okay? And the first thing we're going to define is our input layer. Okay? So this is where we t give it the shape of our data, right? So because we're working with color images, it's, there's going to be a rows, columns, right? Height and width. And then the channels, which is because when you're working with colors, there's three color channels, okay? Red, blue, green. Okay, and then we name our layer. Now when I'm working with advanced models, I like to name all of my layers. So if I run into issues, I can pinpoint exactly where the problem is. All right, now this next section here, these are our main layers, okay? So these are just 2D convolutions, but I want you to notice something here, okay? So when you're using the functional API and you're creating more advanced models, what you end up doing is the way you stack layers is you end up calling them like functions, okay? So you'll see this is how we attach this first layer, this first conv 2D convolution, right? We've called it main com 2 d one okay? And we stack it with our input layer by passing it in almost like a parameter, all right? So what you're doing is you're calling these tensors like functions, okay? And you're passing them the previous layers, okay? So now we've set this conv2d1 layer, this first one, consists of our 16 neuron conv2d and our input layer defined above, okay? And now let's move on. Now we create another 32 neuron 2d convolution, okay? We've named that main conv 2D, and now we pass it in our conv 2D1 from above, okay? Now, conv 2D1 also consists of our input layer, okay? So now by passing that in to our second convolutional layer, now this conv 2D value here consists of all three layers, okay? And then so on and so forth for our third layer, okay, of 64, and then we flatten them, all right, because now we're going to create our dense layers, all right, and it's the same idea, same idea here. We pass flatten in to our dense one, dense one into our dense two, okay. All right, so now we're going to get to our two predictions here, okay. So let's focus on this first chunk here. This is where we're going to predict our lane lines, all right. So notice that we pass our flattened layer to our first dense layer, okay? So these are just two dense layers of 256, 256 neurons each, all right? And then we create our prediction, our output prediction, which is going to be a sigmoid function, right? Because in our training data, um, in those images we download from Supervisely, wherever the lanes are, are going to be a 1 within the image, right? because our output is actually going to be an image, right? It's going to be an image, only in instead of having the, the road and all that, it's just going to have the lanes, okay? That's our output. But we're going to use the sigmoid there, okay? Because those images we download from Supervisely, wherever I've labeled the lanes, they're just going to be a 1, okay? They're not going to be your normal pixel value, which is, normal pixel values are between 0 and 255, okay? These are just going to, they're just going to all be a 1, okay? And if you wanted to view it, a, like make the the output image human readable, you would just change those ones to like 255 so they'd show up as white or something like that. All right, so we're passing so here so here we're passing our dense two layer, which consists of our flatten and and our first dense layer, passing that into our prediction output. Okay, which is a, again a sigmoid. All right, so now let's move on to our second prediction, and this is the lane type. Now I want to point something out here. Notice how we are passing, we're not passing our, our prediction image, our prediction output here, or any of these dense, first two dense layers from our lane line prediction. We're passing in flatten, okay? So we're passing in our flatten layer up here. So it's almost like our neural network is splitting into two, okay? So this is, these, so these two chunks here, this lane line prediction, and this lane type prediction are completely separate from each other, okay? So think of our neural network like, like it's splitting into two here, okay? And if I were to diagram our neural network, it would look something like you see here, where you have our input layer, and then our three dense layers, and then our flattened layer, and then you can see our two output paths 
down at the bottom. The path on the left is our two dense layers that output the lane predictions. And our output on the right, again, another two dense layers that predict the lane type. Okay, So this is essentially our network. So we're passing flatten in to both of these separately. Okay. And now again, we're adding stacking two dense layers of 64. And then again, now we have another second output. And this is our predictions type. Okay, this is where we're predicting our lane type. All right, so now we create a model. Okay, and we pass in our inputs, which is simply our input image that we're getting from our NumPy array. Only as our outputs now, we're going to pass in both our lane prediction and our lane type prediction. Okay, so we pass in two outputs, an array consisting of multiple output tensors. Okay, and now we're going to compile our model here. And then we're going to fit our model down here and finally save our model. Okay, all right, now the rest of the code down here at the bottom, this is purely to test the model. Okay, so I'm just going to loop over a folder of images, pass them to our model, okay, and then we'll make predictions with our model, okay, and we're going to get multiple outputs. Okay, so now our model.predict is going to return one value, okay, but we just split it out with the using indexing here. Okay, so that's how we take our output and we split it into our lane predictions and our lane type predictions. Okay, and then down here, this is where, because remember, our predictions, where we predict our lanes, is, is, is going to be a sigmoid. Okay, that's, a, that's our activation function. So it's only going to predict values between 0 and 1. Okay, but we want an output image, right? We want to be able to look at where it predicted our lanes. We want to be able to see it. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying where there's a 1, make it 255. Okay, that'll allow our lanes to appear as white on a black background, okay? And then here, we're just writing text. So whatever the lane type is, we're going to write that as text on the image, okay? And then here, we're just displaying. So we're going to display the predictions, okay? So we should get, so the resulting image we see should show where the lanes are, and then it also should show in text, human readable text, what the lane types are. The lane types for the left lane and the lane type for the right lane. So whether it's a double solid, a dash line, or whatever. Okay, so that's the code. So now we're going to run this, and what's going to happen is it's first going to train. We're going to train on 50 epochs, okay? And then we're going to run our predictions. So then we're going to run this code that we just reviewed. That's just going to simply iterate over images in a directory and make predictions on where the lanes are and what the lane types are. And then we're going to display that. Now I have a pretty fast GPU, so this should go pretty quickly. So we'll run this. And training should be done in a second here. And here you have it. You can see our lanes at the bottom, and you can see our lane types at the top. And the predictions are indeed fairly accurate. Actually, they're very accurate if you take a look. So that's how you predict multiple outputs using the Advanced Keras Functional API. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.